While state lawmakers are poised to legalize cannabis in Minnesota, low-level THC edibles, including gummies, chocolates, and drinks, have already been legal for almost a year now. But when lawmakers legalized that market, they did so without regulating it, creating an unchecked industry with virtually no accountability. Tonight, Fox 9 investigator Nathan O'Neill puts the marketplace to the test, exposing holes in the system that could leave you at risk. Yeah, well, here's the truth. Right now, the state of Minnesota has no idea how many companies are actually selling these products. But what is clear, some Minnesotans have already fallen victim to this unregulated industry, and in more ways than one. It's the precursor to marijuana in Minnesota. You had no idea what was in it? No. An unregulated industry of THC products with no rules, no constraints, and no accountability. It's the Wild West. The Fox 9 investigators giving you an undercover look at Minnesota's THC marketplace. Not all products are what they say they are. And what you need to know before grabbing edibles off the shelves. <laughs> For Tony Arani, this October encounter with Blaine police captured his state of confusion. What was it? Do you know? Uh, Sam uh, Jelly. Okay. Sam, I, I don't know what is it. Some of the drugs. The 72 year old diabetic said he was, quote, experiencing low blood sugar at a tobacco shop and asked if they had any candy. Oh, no, wasn't in a commercial bag? No, no, a regular clear bag, pl plastic bag. But Tony tells the Fox 9 investigators what he got was not normal candy, but a handful of THC edibles, which he says disoriented him and landed him in the hospital. I took about six, seven right away. Did the workers ever tell you that those were THC? No, he didn't tell me. And then you spent three days in the hospital after that? Yeah, I, yeah, okay. I looked up. I am in hospital. Tony filed complaints with police, the state attorney general, and the board of pharmacy, all to no avail since there's currently no regulation or oversight of the THC marketplace. Tony's story is just one example of how an unregulated THC market can leave someone vulnerable. But there are some other major concerns, including a lack of testing. You see, H. edible is only supposed to contain a very small amount of THC, which is the psychoactive ingredient found in cannabis. But the Fox 9 investigators have learned that's not always the case. To truly understand the state of the market and what's currently for sale on Minnesota shelves, the Fox 9 investigators checked out a handful of Twin City area shops that sell low-level hemp-derived THC products. It's worth noting none of these businesses are required to have a license to sell these THC edibles, but each piece is legally only supposed to have up to five milligrams of THC. And we got wild berry, sour apple, and watermelon in those. The Fox 9 investigators gathered five different types of gummies, all sold at shops throughout the Twin Cities metro, and prepared them for a blind test. We separated samples of each gummy into generic containers and labeled them A through E to maintain the anonymity of each product. Quite the process. Johanna Holloway is a lab technician for Fina Analytics. We'll do one, two, three, four, five. She conducted our blind test of each sample using a complex process to determine how much THC was in each product. It's a very heavy gummy. In Minnesota, the max amount allowed is supposed to be five milligrams of THC per piece. Companies need to be held accountable because it's, there's, there's just bad actors. The original packaging for samples A and D both advertised five milligrams of THC per gummy. Our test confirmed both samples were pretty close to hitting that mark, but the rest of our samples were anything but close. In fact, sample E was the worst offender, with THC levels measuring more than six times what's supposed to be allowed with 32 milligrams of THC per gummy. So this product not only was lying about what it was actually selling, yes. but it also goes beyond the scope of the law. Correct. There's really no way to enforce it. State Senator Lindsay Port is sponsoring legislation to legalize marijuana. Her bill would also establish new regulations and create an oversight agency for the existing low-dose THC market. It is not regulated and safe. We cannot guarantee what is in that, what the levels are, um, and that is really one of my biggest arguments for 
legalizing is we need a regulated, tested industry that puts out a product that is safe. Over the past year, the Minnesota Board of Pharmacy is the only agency with some very loose oversight of the existing THC market. We need licensing, we need taxation, better regulation and enforcement. So far, the agency has received nearly 60 complaints related to THC products, which have largely resulted in warning letters. The board's only major action is this lawsuit against a Moorhead-based company called Northland Vapor after five Des Moines high school students were sickened after eating a small amount of THC gummies. The agency seized $7 million in product, claiming they had as much as 50 times the legal limit in THC. In a statement, Northland Vapor's attorney criticized the state's actions as, quote, hyperaggression and a, quote, regulatory overreach. Back at the state capitol, Senator Port is banking on the DFL-controlled legislature to legalize cannabis by the end of May. The future of this low-level THC market hinges on whether this cannabis bill is in fact passed. What happens if it doesn't? It's going to. <laughs> if it does, it would likely be another 12 to 18 months before Minnesota is ready to roll out the new marijuana market while also reining in the existing THC edibles market. Should this bill become law, mm -hmm. we might still be in this kind of legal gray area for some time still. Are you concerned about that? I am working as hard as I can to shrink that gray area. Um, we, we've been talking with folks who do testing. Um, we don't have capacity in Minnesota right now is part of the problem. We don't really have the testing infrastructure because we have such a small medical marijuana program that really we need to scale that up and my goal is to have really strong testing options for folks up within 60 days i think that is really critical as for tony he hopes stirring up enough attention to his experience will also convince others of the pressing need for accountability supposed to be some rules And we should mention one of the products we had tested showed potency results that were actually lower than what's listed on the packaging. But our lab tech suspects there were synthetics added to that product. That's a component that was not listed on the label, showing yet another example of how customers have no idea what they're really getting.